Make no mistake, my friends, the powers that be in the mainstream media and up in Washington, D.C. are absolutely terrified of the state of Florida right now. You see, unlike the state of Pennsylvania, we are not going to allow this latest assassination attempt on Donald Trump to get memory hold. See, nobody's talking about what happened up in Butler, Pennsylvania. That all went away right away. That's not going to happen here because they know we have the law on our side. And we have a governor and a government that is willing to stand up and do the right thing. We're going to unleash our own version of the pit bull with lipstick. Those of you who remember way back, 2008, 2009, the reference to Sarah Palin. We have one of those here in Florida. Her name is Ashley Moody, and she's a fifth generation native of the state of Florida. So we're going to get to the bottom of it. Make no mistake, there's nothing they're going to do about it. And I haven't heard anyone, even the most right-wing Patriot channel, ask the obvious question. How does someone like this, this guy, this Ruth, how does someone who's from North Carolina and lives in Hawaii know where to be in Florida at the exact location, at the exact golf course, where Mr. Trump made this last-minute decision to play golf? How did he know? You see, there's a mole somewhere around Mr. Trump. There's a spy. I had thought about this back during the last issue from Pennsylvania, but I thought, you know what? That might be a bridge too far. I don't want to falsely accuse anyone. But right now, his entire security team needs to be dismissed. And the state of Florida needs to take over. Now, some are probably asking, wait, Florida Maquis, totally agree with what you're saying. Why are we on your backup channel? Why are we at the Florida Maquis Alpha site? Well, Last week, I posted a picture and made a post. It was just a thumbnail. It was just one single still image from The Walking Dead. It was all fake. The entire image was fake. It was all CGI. It was a fairly somewhat graphic image, if you didn't know it was fake, of zombie gore. Not the politician, just the word. Blood and guts, basically. And they decided that that was something that my audience just couldn't handle seeing a still image of. It wasn't even the content of the video. It was just the image alone. And because, of course, I used the image as the thumbnail for the video, and I also used it as a post over at the Communities tab, it counted both as a warning and a strike. So they basically gave my channel seven days, the main proprietary channel, Seven-day suspension, and we're in the middle of that, but that's why we created the Florida Maquis Alpha site. See, it's a battlefield of the mind. They're trying to protect you from yourself. They're trying to protect you from seeing something that was already all over YouTube. Season 7, Episode 1 of The Walking Dead. An image that literally, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say, Hundreds of millions of people have seen around the world by now. But it was an excuse. If you'd like to help out the channel, if you'd like to join us at Patreon, we're doing a lot of work over there this week. And here at the Backup Channel, bringing up the numbers. Thank you, everyone who's joined us. It's only a dollar over there. Only one U.S. dollar per month. Even less if you sign up for an entire year. There's three levels, one, five, ten, and twenty. The vast majority of the content is available for one and five. But a lot of people have stepped up and said, Florida Maki, I believe in you. I believe in your channel. I believe in your vision. You've been putting out daily videos for the last seven years. Daily videos every single day. Keep it up. Whether it's Venezuela, whether it's Antarctica, whether it's the contrast of capitalism and socialism, either historically with the founding fathers to now, it's always something to make you think. And hundreds and hundreds of videos exist over at the Florida Maki Patreon channel that have never been seen on YouTube. Because they are, well, sometimes a little bit too graphic. Now, let's get right to it. Ashley Moody, Florida's pit bull with lipstick, Attorney General. Florida investigation on Trump assassination attempt important 
for faith in the justice system. Tallahassee, Florida, Florida Attorney General Ashley Moody said Florida's independent investigation of the assassination attempt of President Donald Trump is important for bolstering faith and confidence in the criminal justice system. Moody said as soon as Governor Ron DeSantis heard about the incident, he was very much intent on making sure Florida investigators and Florida resources were added to this effort. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are already aware of this, but not necessarily the media's fear. Because there are things going on that the feds can't control. Experts suspicious of DeSantis opening parallel probe of possible Trump shooting attempt. You see, on the ground, in reality, we have a lot more resources to bring to bear on this than the feds do. And that's what the feds don't want you to know. They just want to claim jurisdiction, claim jurisdiction, say we don't have any control over it when we really do. Florida Monkey, since you said that you're suspicious, or somebody said that they were suspicious, I'm suspicious of you changing the tack of your channel and why you're now supporting and voting for Donald Trump. You never said before that you were going to vote for Kamala Harris. That's true. And you said multiple times before that you didn't support them and there's no way that you could. But you did see that they had Google on their side. But why now are you personally supporting Donald Trump? Well, it's real simple. Something was announced yesterday. Something was announced yesterday that is so exceedingly rare. It's almost impossible to find these days. What was it? It was actually an announcement from Donald Trump's wife. And if you really think about it and use your head, the one between your ears, your brain, to think about it, you'll realize, holy crap, what a departure from America the last 10 years. What did she say? What was the big deal? You see, a lot of people saw Melania Trump, and this is the image they got. Because they probably came to politics in the last three to five years. They might be only 35 or 40 years old. They don't remember. They don't remember years ago when they were liberals and she was a nude model. Not that that necessarily matters, but what's the real story? The real story is that all of our lives, all of our lives, your life, my life, his life, her life, littered with imperfect decisions. Things that we did at the time that seemed right, seemed like the way to go, but then as you got older or something else happened, you went in a different direction. You see, what Melania Trump did was amazing. She came out and said, you know what? I made those decisions, and I'm proud, and I stand by those decisions. Would I do those things now? But at the time, it was the right thing to do, and I'm proud of it, and I'm going to celebrate it because they made me who I am now. It's literally the anti-victim, anti-woke message. And this article right here, we're going to get to it in a minute because we got other things to talk about. Melania Trump and quote-unquote nagging as a class issue. And this is a great article about the classic relationship between a man and a woman and what it is and what it means and what makes it so valuable and the roles they play. And she talks about being a traditional wife, a traditional mother, and the value of that and how she values it. And it might even bother some modern conservative women to hear the things that she had to say in this article. But... There's even a bigger issue. Florida Maki, why would that make you vote for Donald Trump? Well, look at this. Donald Trump himself is evolving. He and his sons and another guy are launching a crypto venture. But Florida Maki, he, he went to Nashville and he's always been for... No, he hasn't. He came out in 2021 and was vocally and vociferously against all cryptocurrency. Trump makes first payment in Bitcoin using cryptocurrency, according to him, is very easy now. 
The Republican presidential candidate said Donald Trump used Bitcoin to buy cheeseburgers and beer for his supporters at a bar in New in liberal blue New York City on National Cheeseburger Day. This made Trump the first ever incumbent or former U.S. president to make a payment using the world's most popular cryptocurrency, according to media reports. I just made the first transaction in Bitcoin, Trump announced. To cheers from Bitcoin enthusiasts who packed the establishment paying with cryptocurrency, he said, was very easy. Now... Trump said, they've been treating you very badly at the SEC, U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, and we are going to treat you very fairly, he told the crowd. Get out and vote, because if you vote, we cannot lose. The former president said the purchase of burgers by Trump was, quote, one of the most important Bitcoin transactions of all time, according to one of the pub key's owners. Now, why is this such a big deal? Trump appears to have made a U-turn on cryptocurrencies during the current presidential campaign. In 2021, he told Fox News that they were, pay attention here, they were a scam, quote, potentially a disaster waiting to happen, another quote, the dollar should remain the currency of the world, currency of the world, and, investig and investing in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, quote, hurts the U.S. currency, the dollar, he argued at the time, three short years ago. Was that not the exact argument I was making? Those of you who think that I've, well, you flipped on this and you flipped on so did Donald Trump. When new evidence is presented, when new evidence is presented, the sign of a functioning, intelligent mind is that you say, okay, Things are different now than they were then. So now we're going to go over in this other different direction. Said before, Donald Trump started his life railing against political life, railing against Ronald Reagan back in the 80s for the tax cuts. It hurt his real estate business badly. Real estate was a tax shelter. Taxes at that time for the very wealthy were very high. So people took their money that was just laying around and they put it in real estate. So when Ronald Reagan came in and cut that top marginal rate down from 70% to 40%. Huge amounts of money left the real estate market. And it hurt Donald Trump. And he went before Congress and testified against Ronald Reagan's tax cuts. He was a Democrat. Then he became a Republican for a little while. Then he decided to start the Reform Party, his own party, in 1999. Then, in 2001, when Donald, when a uh, George Bush, Jr., W., became president. He became a Democrat again. 2000, 2008, that's when all the Stormy Daniels stuff happened. That's when all the going to the Playboy Mansion happened. All those pictures that you saw. And then when Barack Obama got elected, all of a sudden he became a Republican again. So what does this show us? What does this show us? That life presents us with different challenges and different viewpoints at different times. And we make decisions based on that, don't we? There was a time when Melania Trump, Melania Naus, K-N-A-U-S-S, -S, was from Slovenia, and they didn't have a lot of money, and because textiles were a big thing in her home country back in the 70s, a lot of the children were put into fashion shows, and she was very pretty, and she won, won a bunch of contests. She's a former roommate of Victoria Silvstead. I'm sure a lot of you know who that is. You know, and she did nude modeling, like a lot of the girls did. It's just part of her past. But for her to come out now, in her 50s, as a mom, she's only two weeks younger than me, and say, you know what, I'm not ashamed of it, I'm not a victim of it. I'm proud of it, and I'm going to own it. That's the attitude we need. That's Florida in a nutshell. That is what really being the essence of being a Floridian is all about. It's what the essence of being an American used to be all about. But since COVID and since Me Too and all this other nonsense where everybody's a victim of this, victim of that, reminds me of the song from the Eagles, Get Over It. Turn on the tube and what do I hear? A whole lot of people crying, don't blame me. They point their crooked little finger at everyone else, spend all their time feeling sorry for themselves. Victim of this, victim of that. Your mom is too thin, your daddy's too fat. Get over it. It's the first line of the song. What the hell happened to the Eagles? But 
But funny story that goes right along with that. Russia, a safe haven for normalcy. Respect for traditional values could make the country a top destination for people fleeing the West's wokeism. Margarita Simonian. Simonian? We'll say Simonian. That sounds a little better. Margarita Simonian has said, The West is in the grip of a wokeism catastrophe and is constantly trying to force other nations to adhere to its ideology. See, the reason, one of the big reasons that Russia has decided not to bother to do anything about the monkeypox is because that's largely transmitted like AIDS is transmitted, and I'll just leave it there. And since they don't have a problem with that in Russia, because they have traditional values that are enforced, traditional values that are enforced from the top down, they're not worried about it. Simonian recalled many recent examples of ideas that run counter to traditional values being lauded by Westerners, including same-sex marriage, the child-free movement, and the gender reassignment practices, as well as the latest Olympic Games in which two physiological males were pummeling women. She accused the West of aggressively promoting this unpleasant, unfamiliar, and often shocking agenda. Progress is like yogurt. Not all are equally healthy. And this is, they claim that their ideology, speaking of the West, came out of humanism and progress, and that we, her speaking of the Russians, are inhumane because we do not let people follow their sometimes perverted ideas and do not let these ideas be realized, as in letting a three-year-old cho choose their gender. Now, let's go back to 2016, where Melania Trump was talking about how Donald Trump doesn't, uh, she's not needy, not nagging. And how Donald Trump doesn't um, change diapers. In short, Melania doesn't nag because she doesn't ask her husband to do anything. Quote, there's a lot of women out there that demand that the husband act like the wife. And you know, there's a lot of husbands that listen to that. Melania put it, we know our roles. He didn't change diapers. You see, this, you see, you say stuff like that, and all of a sudden there's a whole bunch of people out there like, well, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. I want my husband to be... That's why you're probably not going to have one. See, it's just, to me, it's just badass. It's just a complete badass that so many people wanted to shame her and make her feel small and make her feel less than or make her feel like she didn't have any good judgment or she couldn't be a good mom or she wouldn't be a good first lady because of something that she did in the past, a decision that she made in the past. And what did she do? Did she try to make excuses for it? Did she try to you know, explain away this or explain away that or blame men or blame uh, 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 what's the, uh, we'll blame the patriarchy or some crap like that? No. She owned her decision and said, we need to celebrate it. So, yeah, sorry. If that's got, you know, if that's the woman who's married to the president, yeah, absolutely. Seven days a week, twice on Sundays. I'll vote. Absolutely vote for the man. Because I know who's in his ear. I know who he's talking to every night. Virtually. Every single night. Forget all the advisors and forget the people around him. If that's his wife and that's her attitude and that's her beliefs, yeah. That's the choice. That's the only choice. Absolutely the only choice. So... I could, you know, say the same thing about Governor DeSantis and his wife and Ashley Moody and her husband. Ashley Moody's husband is a police officer, by the way. So, believe me, we're going to figure it out. Fine. I mean, if, uh, correct me on this, please, with some, you know, video that predates mine where somebody asked this question seriously and debated it with anyone. How did he know? Where to be. That's what makes the whole story bunk to me. The whole story is, there's just so many holes in it. How would this guy have possibly known 
which golf course Donald Trump was even playing. And even if somehow he just guessed right, how the hell did he know the layout of where a good place to hide would be or wouldn't be? He's from North, he's not from Florida. He's from North Carolina, living in Hawaii. And how in the world did, I mean, how did he know he was going to be able to camp out there for 12 hours with nobody sweeping? See, that was a story, too, that he showed up at, according to phone records, that he showed up there at 2 o'clock in the morning. How did he know he wasn't going to get busted? If he knew that's where the president was going to be, how did he know there wasn't going to be some massive security sweep that was going to go through and bust him before the president even showed up? I mean, there's Donald, Donald Trump's got golf courses all over the world. Some he probably hasn't played in months. And other people play those courses. How does he know he wasn't going to get seen by somebody else? It's just, I'm sorry. It just doesn't make sense. None of it makes sense. And believe me, we're going to get to the bottom of it. We're going to get to the bottom of it. We got to the bottom of the issues with COVID. And we're going to get to this. Ashley Moody, well done. Well done. Florida executive order signed within a day. Florida executive order signed within a day, giving her broad, sweeping powers to do virtually anything she wants to do to investigate this. And the media is terrified. They're already trying. They're already trying to make this out to be something more than what it is, other than just getting to the truth. So I'll leave it there. Things change. Things change. Could sure use your support. One dollar. That's it. One single US dollar per month. Even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable first 90 days. The main channel, there's Cash App link, there's PayPal link, there's um I believe I even have Bitcoin over there too. If I'm not mistaken. So, those of you, if you want a crypto link, just ask down in the comments section. I'll put one down there. And I believe I, I believe I think I already have one in the description box. So, God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.